my name is Jordan Robert, and I'm going to be talking to you about what I think is really one of the most important steps of the problem solving process, and that's the problem defining. Albert Einstein is credited with saying, if I had one hour to save the world, I would spend 55 minutes defining the problem and only five minutes finding the solution. So that really emphasizes not only the importance of problem definition, but it also shows that the problem definition is gonna take a lot of time and a lot of effort in comparison to how long it takes you to actually solve the problem. And I feel like uh, a lot of engineers don't think about the problem solving process this way. Whenever you begin to have customer work, that always comes with a budget, it always comes with a timeline. And it's really tempting to wanna to produce a solution really quickly, and that can lead to rushing through the definition part of the problem solving process. With customer work, it rarely, if ever, comes to you fully defined. What they don't really know all the time is what is required of their product in order for it to be successful, in order for it to actually solve the problem that they're trying to solve. Say, for instance, a customer came to us and said, I really wanna make a box. I want a box that is a one foot cube and I really need the box to open and close. Well, that's great, but it's not a fully defined problem. We really need to know more about what problem we're trying to solve. What's gonna be inside the box is, are we trying to protect what's inside the box from water, from fire? You know, how well do we need to seal this box? Is there any chance the end user is gonna to wanna to use the box as a step stool? So these are some things that we really need to try to define up front so that we can make sure that whenever we get to the end of the process, we have a box that meets their needs. And part of defining the problem is setting requirements. It's important not only to set requirements, but to set meaningful requirements. The problem you run into if you don't set enough requirements is you get to the end of the project and your client isn't happy. Let's say we get to the end of the project, I give our customer a box. It's a waterproof box just like they wanted. It's sturdy enough that a person can stand on it if they want to use it as a step stool. And I hand it off to them. And the first time my client takes the box, they say, you know what? That's a lot heavier than I thought it was going to be. Can you make it lighter? Well. That's gonna be a lot harder you know, at the end of the process than if we had set that requirement at the beginning. So again, let's say, let's go back to the beginning of the process. We should really set a maximum weight for this. And we talk to the, the, the customer and they say, okay, we're, we agree that X amount of pounds is our maximum weight. We get to the end of the product, project and now we're able to hand off a box that is exactly what they wanted and they're happy, their expectations are met and that's wonderful. But what if they go to market that product, they put that product on the shelf, and all the customers who is the, are their customer base take the product off the shelf and they think, this will hold all my stuff. It'll be great and it'll be sturdy, but I really wanna be able to haul this around with me really easily, and it's still, it's pretty heavy. In that case, we set a requirement, we met the requirement, but we're still not selling boxes. And that's because we didn't set a meaningful requirement. And so one way to differentiate between meeting requirements and setting meaningful requirements is to look at the difference between verification and validation. Verification is asking you, are you answering the questions correctly? Where validation is asking, are you answering the correct questions? And that's why it takes time. That's why it takes time to define the problem. One example of a product that I worked on that we were able to verify but we were not able to validate. It was a plastic part, and it was supposed to assemble onto a sand-casted part, an existing, already manufactured, tons of oil on the market, sand-cast aluminum part. So if you're not familiar with sand-casting, you make molds from a, a pattern, and each of the molds are made out of sand. It's not the most precise manufacturing process in the world, so we created a part, we did the design work, we created a prototype. The prototype fit perfectly onto our sample sand cast part. It was beautiful. We loved it, we were happy, our client loved it, they were happy. And then they took the prototype and tried to put it on other sand cast parts they had out in the field. And then we quick, quickly realized that the variations part to part were far more than normal variations you see in sand casting. What happened was, not only 
within the same model number, within the same manufacturer, not only did you have those normal variations in size due to sand casting, but they also used, used different geometries for their patterns. So they had holes in different places, the holes were different sizes, and we had really relied on the placement and size of those holes in order to fit our plastic part. So here we are with a prototype that fits one part that we can find. So we, we set requirements, we met the requirements, we had a verified design, but it wasn't valid because it doesn't solve a problem if it only fits the one part we have in our, in our shop. So what we should have done is spent more time on the front end. We should have done some research. The questions we should have asked, rather, are not what are tolerances for sand casting. It should have been what's the requirement for a good part for this part for this manufacturer. And we would have seen on the front end that we couldn't rely as precisely on the placement and the size of those holes. And we could have come up with a solution that was more universal. And so that was really my first experience where we didn't spend enough time on the front end really making meaningful requirements and really defining the problem clearly. And that resulted in ultimately a failed project that did not go into manufacturing. And so that's why I think that proper problem definition is a necessity for a successful project.